I upgraded to E8TX. <laughs> oh man, I really tried to keep it small and keep it at a micro ATX. You know, it's a wild ride doing these home labs. Start from Raspberry Pi to micro ATX. Now I'm at extended ATX. And man, the reason for this is because I wanted 10 gigabit networking. I also want to use two GPUs for two virtual machines. So if I wanted to, two people could game on my server. So two gamers, one CPU. And man, it's a wild ride. Long story short, I wanted to use TrueNAS scale, but I don't think it's ready yet to migrate from Proxmox to TrueNAS scale. So I was trying to mess with the old OS's and trying to do all that, but that was a pain. I do not want to explain all that. And through the process of upgrading my server, my CPU died, so I have to get it RMA'd. And that was annoying to wait. Uh, thankfully, it was covered by the warranty and I didn't have to buy another CPU. Um, and the major upgrade on the CPU was that I swapped my desktop CPU and my server CPU because I don't really use my CPU as much as my desktop as I thought I would, which was a 3900X. So I put the 3900X into the server and the 2700X into my computer for gaming. And I honestly cannot even notice the difference. So I don't know, I haven't really done anything intense on my computer at all. So it's just chilling now. And yeah, so the original idea was to get a 10 gigabit NIC, but I found a really good deal on this motherboard. In, I forgot exactly what the motherboard was called. It's X570 Creator Prestige. That's the one. And yeah, it was crazy. Um, I really tried to mess with the operating systems a little too much. Because what I wanted to do was have two operating systems, you know, ZFS Proxmox, but in order to migrate my current Proxmox to ZFS Proxmox, like it just, it was too much of a pain to do it. And I wanted to make sure I had backups, but I didn't have enough drives to back up what I wanted to keep. And I did not want to spend more money on my server. I'm actually using my old server case that I, that I used for my first PC build. And once I got all that done, I started messing with everything. I had a problem with the Proxmox container because I upgraded from Proxmox 6 to 7. And the problem upgrading from 6 to 7 is that in the LXC containers, Docker was not working. So what I had to do is back up on my Docker containers and then make a new LXC container and run my Docker containers there. And then that worked fine. And then also try to get peer to peer 10 gigabit to work. And that wasn't working the way I wanted it to, which was to pass through the whole ethernet port on the motherboard to TrueNAS. So what I ended up doing is making um, a network on Proxmox and then giving that to my TrueNAS virtual machine. And then I was able to do peer to peer from my server to my computer. So now when I record like this video, it goes through to my server instead of my computer. And then since we're on the topic of TrueNAS, I also created uh, backblaze v2 buckets so everything gets backed up and encrypted locally and uploaded to v2 and what else did i do there is just so much to do um i don't know i'm just looking around and portainer looks really nice in dark mode, oh man, it's 
It looks really nice. It's satisfying to look at in dark mode. And I also fixed sync thing, which is, um, I was <laughs> accidentally forwarding the wrong port. So my two instances would never sync like flawlessly. And now they do. It's just amazing. I thought I had to forward the 8384 port, but it's the 22,000 port. Yeah, that was definitely a change there. And yeah, I've just been working on my server a lot. You know, I haven't stopped. I've just been procrastinating on making this video. And also, it's just a lot of problems, you know, like I'm just reading through this list of problems. It's just too much. It's like jumping here and there and I don't want to explain every single problem. But I did have a problem with TrueNAS updating. But I just had to fix the DNS and the gateway there. And yeah, everything's good. What I plan on doing now is making sure Proxmox does all the backups. For my virtual machines and uploads them to b2 um i believe i'm gonna do that unencrypted but i'll probably encrypt it in case for a worst case scenario that my server dies oh another thing that i did on my server is make it a cloud gaming server so if i'm not home even though i'm always home i could play video games off of my server using parsec and that has worked pretty well i mainly use it to emulate ps2 games or ps3 games you know for that nostalgic feel and i'm using the 1660 which i bought i'm overpriced but you know i got it and yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. It is finally complete. We got four six terabyte of iron wolves. We got two fans at the front, one fan here to blow to the GPUs, fan up here to take some heat away from here. We have our two NVMe slots filled. The top one is one terabyte. The bottom one is a Fire Cuda two terabyte. The top one is a Crucial P1, I believe. We got the LSI card, 1060, six gigabyte, 1660, six gigabyte. And of course we got our boot drive here. Um, the CPU used here is a 3900X. And 750 watt power supply and that is done i do have to air out the cpu as you can see there's some dust there but it's currently night time so i'll do that some other time but everything is good <laughs>